Now right now we got our brickwork right even with where we're going to put our limestone. So we went down Thomas Eddy's, we got the limestone cut, that thickness, and we're going to put the limestone right on here like that. Let me show you how we do it. So this is our limestone. First thing I'm going to do is score it so I can cut through it. You get a little one like this. You get some sandpaper. All right, now we're just getting ready for the limestone. Put it all ready. Now we're bedding, uh, just wetting the limestone a little bit. Put it on. It's got to go to you some. That's it. Oh, you got to go right even. Yeah. That's it. Perfect. Okay, well, we're going to put the little piece in here now. Wet it up because it dries so fast. explain what's going on. We followed right from the top up to the limestone and then our brick continued up here. But the height we really got to get is that angle iron. And our angle iron up there is 40 inches. You can see it right there, 40 inches. I don't know you can't see because of the sun. So I got to run my brick. I want to bring my brick right up to there. So what do you do? Come over here and lay the brick out dry. There's my 40 inches. I'm gonna run the brick on a modulo at number six. All the way up. Six, 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 six. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen courses from the limestone to right up here. So I'll, I'll show you as I go. I'm abandoning this though because I want to hit that angle iron. No one's going to see what's going on up here. Everything in masonry is like a magician. It's a disguise. I'm up a little higher. Let's see what's going on. Here's the angle iron. This brick is going to go up on this angle iron. We look down there, there's two angle irons. Look way down there and get the camera. I don't know. I gotta make sure that them angle irons line up. All right. So I gotta get to this height. Now here's what I'm doing. Here's the angle iron up here. Here's the brick. We're running it on sixes. There's a six. But just to check it out, just so you get the idea, this is the sample that the uh, uh, brick salesman brought. You see where I'm going to end up? And where my joint's going to be? And my other brick is going to end up? So as long as this angle iron's straight, I'm in good shape. So when I, I get this to the other side, I'm going to string a line across it, make sure it's straight, because if it's not straight, I'm going to have to put a roll lock on it, like this. But we don't want to do that, because the other buildings don't have roll locks. So I want to make sure you understand what I'm doing. Uh, I did a video on how to figure out brickwork. I'll put it on uh, the screen and uh, I'm just doing this for an example to make sure you see what I'm trying to get at. Now we're on top of the beam. I put this line up all the way. It's pretty good. All the way down that line is good so I'm not worried about laying the brick across. We're putting the flashing on top of the, uh, the angle iron and he's just grabbing it and pulling it. See in the back? Yeah. That's how we're doing it. Yep. Lining it up on the bottom. Okay. Hi, Mike. 
want to point this out where the flashing is right here where the metal is that's the end of the angle iron put a piece of insulation there so that angle iron expands and contracts it won't crack the brick now we're going on top of the angle iron and here's what we did it made everything out dry then we know where we end up with our joints all the way to the end of the building we're putting those weep poles up here too see it every couple feet Now we're here with the electrician. He uh, does electricity during the day and he shocks the women at night, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we're putting the box in the brick. Okay, he's got one of these highfalutin cutting tools, right? Yep. He's gonna cut that skin out of that. Oh, there you go. That is impressive. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, then I just muttered in, right? Right, just muttered in. Okay. I'm gonna break here. I'm gonna knock this off. Like that. That's gonna go in like that. Now you're gonna ask me, how do you know right or wrong way these uh, things in. Well, it all depends on the electrician how well, they want to put in. So, well, now we're working on the other side. I could get the saw out, do a perfect job, but it's going to get hit by the shield anyway. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. That's it. Almost that's it. That's it, that's how I'm going to put it in. Now we're going to, got to know when you're putting this in, usually if they fasten that to the wall, 98% of the time it's wrong. Then they got to come back and they got to fix it, but it don't make a difference anyway. So you got to ask who's the expert on the job. So basically, that's how I go around that, that a conduit. And that face place is going to cover that. So, how do you know who an expert is? So, we're going to talk about that. We're going to go to Black's Legal Dictionary and look up experts. Now, I don't know what's compelling me to do this, but uh, I feel like doing it. This is a copy of Black's Law Dictionary. Anybody who went to law school, took legal courses, or if you go down the courthouse, in your local town this sits on a pedestal and this is where all the lawyers start usually uh, so we're going to look up expert and that's what an expert is right there a person who through education or experience has developed skill or knowledge in a particular subject so that he or she may form an opinion that will assist the fact finder anytime you're looking up something I always look at what it does say and then look at what it doesn't say. It doesn't say because a person has a license or a person is an official or a person works for the government that doesn't make them an expert. This is a legal definition of an expert. I don't know why I'm showing it you but uh, I think it's a good idea if you never took legal courses man they help you a lot. Okay we're back here up with uh, Honest Mark. How did that plate work out? Perfect. 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 And he's going to teach us about the geese right? Yes. Have geese fly in a V around here? Yes. And one side you said it's longer than the other when they fly in a V. There's geese flying in a V. If you ever notice one side is longer than the other. Why, yeah. why is that? There's more geese on that side. Okay, so we now we've learned a lot about geese today and electricity. There we go. What about wall ties? I'm putting wall ties in. And where I want to put them, because you can't see it here, is into this plate. So I put a lot of them in, because when you hit the plate, you know you're hitting something solid. Uh, I put wall ties in. Everybody does it a little different. There's no right and wrong way. 
But the story is, I like to put them in as I go. And the reason I like to put them in as I go is because when I was in the union, my first job was to go around and put all the wall ties in. But uh, what happened was, everyone, the guy gave me a story pole, put all the wall ties in, everyone was wrapped. So I like to put them in as I go, I know exactly where they're going. Now when I put wall ties in, some guys use tar nails. I don't always trust them because I've seen the heads break off. I like something that's galvanized. So I, I actually throw a lot more in than I should and I use different nails to make sure something's gonna last. Because from tearing down buildings in the past, using the same nails all the time, sometimes they'll rot away. So you mix and match, throw extra ones in and you're usually okay. Well, it's raining outside and uh, I'm editing this video today. So make a couple comments on it. Uh, I wanna remind you, I always cover my brick. I want the brick to be consistent. I don't want one pile wet and the other pile dry and you put it up, you're gonna get different colors in your cement. It's gonna freeze. I always cover it to keep everything dry and consistent. Uh, when you're laying out your brick, I knew I built that block building and I knew I was plumb. And I but I dropped the plumb lines anyway and measured all the way down. When you're doing buildings like that, uh, you gotta keep looking up. I seen one guy. Uh, he came up with his brickwork. I didn't see him do it. I didn't see the after effects. And then he got, the carpenter came out too far with the building and he had to step the brick out to keep going. He had a ledge in the brickwork. You don't want to fall into that category. You got to put your lines up and you got to check that whole building out. I like to spend the whole day before anybody gets there to go around that whole building and, and uh, get my, my plan going on. Uh, so you don't want to get into that. You get into windows. One carpenter might put this window here and you go over three feet and the other window's a, a half inch high and it's an inch this way more than it should be. It's going to screw your brickwork up. You always got to keep looking up. You got to make sure the walls ain't out. You got to make sure you got to adjust your brickwork to make it work. It's just the nature of the beast. Uh, that flashing, you know, they only build buildings for 35 years anymore. When I show you the difference between old buildings and new buildings, you'll know what I'm talking about. Angle irons, you know, back before the Civil War, up to about the 1920s, they didn't really use angle irons. They didn't have the steel. They used to build arches out of brick. I'm going to show you that as as we go on. Uh, angle irons, if you don't, if if you're tight up against that angle iron, usually depending on how big it is, it gets hot out. That angle iron is going to expand. So what you want to do is you want to put a little cushion where if it does expand, it might only be a 1 64th of an inch, just enough to give you a hair crack. So angle irons, you gotta, you gotta know what you're doing. I'll show you that later. Wall ties, uh, I've actually seen walls fall over because they didn't use the right nails. You learn more about brickwork and more about construction when you're tearing buildings down than when you're building them because then you see with the after effect now I remember my dad doing a, a wall in the 1960s very early 60s I still drive by it today and it's as good good as it was then I know the way he built it uh, he told me how he was doing it I remember his little kids standing there watching him uh, so that's the end of this video uh, when you get up into the wood section, usually you got to put two sheets of black paper over the wood, and then I put the insulation over it. And then the roofer came over the top and down over the brick so there would be no water getting behind there. We tucked that up in there. I'll show you that. So that's the end of this video. Uh, so we'll continue on after that. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.